so my name is Michael Smith. I'm an associate professor of pediatrics here at the University of Louisville School of Medicine, uh, where I specialize in pediatric infectious diseases. I'm also the lead PI for a new PTN study, safety and pharmacokinetics of multiple dose IV and oral clindamycin in obese and overweight children greater than or equal than the 85th percentile. Over the last decade or so in the United States, the prevalence of, of obesity has really skyrocketed. Uh, the latest national estimates show that about 17% of kids aged 2 to 19 are overweight, and that's defined as BMI greater than 95th percentile. Uh, even a little bit more worrisome is that 12% of those children uh, have a BMI greater than the 97th percentile. That's what we call morbidly obese. Um, and why is that an issue in terms of drugs? Well, we know that children who are obese or overweight metabolize drugs differently. The body handles them differently. And that's probably because once the drug gets inside the body, it's distributed differently than it is in obese children, in non-obese children, excuse me. Uh, another issue is that they may clear the drug differently than non-obese children. So clindamycin is an antibiotic that we most commonly use to treat uh, infections due to a particular bacteria called Staphylococcus aureus, uh, or Staph aureus. Um, and Staph aureus most commonly causes skin infections, uh, things like boils. However, it can cause more serious infections. It can cause bone infections, joint infections, pneumonia, bloodstream infections. And over the last decade or so, we've seen uh, a major increase in rates of staph infections, children admitted to hospitals. Uh, a recent study, including data from about 40 freestanding children's hospitals, show that approximately 34 per every 1,000 admissions, so that's almost one in 30 pediatric admissions, is due to an infection that's due to staph. Uh, and over the last decade, we've seen an uh, increase in methicillin-resistant staph aureus infections, also known as MRSA, and clindamycin really is the preferred drug for that. Uh, over that same time period, we'll see that almost two-thirds of children admitted to children's hospitals with staph infections receive clindamycin. So we re we're looking at clindamycin because it really is a commonly used drug. So these, these two intersecting epidemics, increasing obesity and increasing staph infections, really were the inspiration for this protocol. Uh, we know that obese children are more likely to get staph infections, and we also know that they're more likely to have uh, bad outcomes or complicated infections. And one of those reasons may be that we're not using the right dose of clindamycin. Uh, so really making sure that we're dosing these children appropriately is critical. So we are looking to recruit uh, overweight and obese children, uh, as the title suggests, greater than or equal to 85th percentile for age. Um, so you have to be on IV clindamycin to, to begin the study. And with any dose, really, after the first dose of clindamycin, uh, we'll obtain blood samples to get drug levels and see how well it's cleared and how well it's metabolized. Now, some children switch from IV clindamycin to oral clindamycin, uh, either while they're in the hospital or before they go home. Um, so children who do switch from IV to oral clindamycin will be asked to participate in kind of a second arm of the study, looking at pharmacokinetics of oral clindamycin. Uh, the longest you can be in this study uh, is 18 days. If you stay in the hospital on IV clindamycin, uh, the longest we'll follow them is, is for 14 days. Uh, after 14 days, the study will end, and we'll have a follow-up phone call three days later. Um, so it's not a very long study. Well, we just had our investigators meeting uh, the end of May, and we're looking to enroll our first subject by the end of this month, June, and get all the other sites up and running. We have six sites total, including ours here. Well, if we stay on schedule and start enrolling our patients this month, June 2013, we hope to have our last patient enrolled by March 2014, if not, if not sooner. Uh, and at that point, we'll be able to analyze the data, and, and the implications of the study will depend on kind of what we find. Um, obviously, at this point, we don't know whether obese children differ from non-obese children in the way that their bodies handle clindamycin. If they do, we would go ahead and seek uh, a new dosing, uh, new dosing regimen for overweight and obese children. That's the ultimate goal of the study.